This is a screencast for Lesson 9. In this screencast, we're going to look at drag and drop. Drag and drop is an API that allows us to pick up any element from the screen and drag it on top of another element. Now, there are a variety of uses for this API. For instance, if we were creating a, a board game, we might want to be able to drag the pieces around the board. In this particular example, we're going to create a web application where we can drag any of these elements here, so the header, the A, or the paragraph tag, and drop it into this square here. And when we do so, the text, which currently says drag something onto me, will take on the text of whatever element we drag into it. This is the start of the web application. So you can see here we've got our four elements that we will be able to drag. We've got the box that we're going to be able to drag them into. And I've added some simple CSS here just to put the dashed border around the box. The first thing we need to do is any element that we want to be able to drag, we need to mark it with an attribute. And the attribute is called draggable. So I'll add that like so, and I'll add it to all four of these elements. Next, we need to register an event listener for when the dragging starts. And what we're going to do here is when we detect that the user is dragging an element, we're going to extract the text of the element that they're dragging and store that away in a variable so we can pick it up again when they finally drop the element. In order to do this, we need to add the following event listener on drag start. This listener is going to call a JavaScript function and pass in an event. In order to add JavaScript to the page, we need to add a script block here. So anything we add in the body of this block will be considered JavaScript. And as you can see, we need to add a function called start dragging. Now I could have called this function anything I wanted to. Um, it just seemed like a sensible name. And what we're going to do here is, so you can see it passes an event object to this function. And from this, we can detect which element they are actually dragging and extract its text content. We're then going to store that in a data variable called text on the data transfer object. We now want to turn our attention to the box that we're going to drop the elements onto. Now there's two things we need to do here. Firstly, we need to say that the box is capable of having elements dropped onto it. So by default, you're not allowed to drop elements onto other elements. Secondly, we're going to need to say what happens when that drop event happens. Firstly, we'll start by making the box eligible for drop operations. We need to add an event listener for the on drag over event. So anytime the mouse is dragging another element over top of an element, it tries to call whatever function it has registered for the on drag over event. Now, in this case, the implementation is very simple. All we need to do is tell the browser to prevent the default behavior. So the default behavior is don't allow elements to be dropped on the element. So by preventing that, 
the element is a target for a drop operation. Finally, we need to say what should happen when the drop actually occurs. So this is when the user releases their mouse while they're dragging an element over the other element. So the event listener in this case is on drop. And you can see I've defined uh, that this should call a JavaScript function called drop. And again, it's going to pass the event through. The implementation for this is as follows. So you can see I've declared my function name called drop and said it accepts a parameter, which is the event. And then we're going to grab that text that we previously stored in the start dragging event. So you can see in both cases we're, we're extracting that from event data transfer, except this time we're calling get data whereas previously we called set data. So this will give us the text that was originally stored when the drag operation began. Next, we're going to set the text content on the target of the event. So the target in this case is going to be the element that we are dropping the other element onto, so the box. And so we can simply set its text content to be that text. So if I save that and we go across to the web page, I should be able to drag an element like this. So you remember, as soon as I started dragging it, that text was set in the data transfer event object. When I come over it like this, it's going to start asking this element whether it's applicable to have other elements dropped onto it, and it's going to respond that it is. And finally, when I release my mouse button, the on drop event is going to fire and the text is going to update. So I can keep doing this with other elements as well. That concludes the screencast for lesson 9.